We are happy, privileged, and honored to have Dr. Wilson here today. He's, he's a wealth of information. He loves the Lord, and you're going to learn much today. He might not give you chapter and verse, but he's going to give you a lot of things that relate to the Word of God. And so will you welcome Dr. Fred Russell. Is this thing on? Well, it's good to be back here again after uh, last year. So I'm excited to deliver this message. Uh, just to uh, thank you to Pastor Joe, because he uh, literally puts his neck out uh, to bring me in and kind of talk about somewhat of a controversial, emotional subject, uh, all, for, all for you. So uh, thank you again for having faith in me. It's an honor and privilege to be speaking to you today on this uh, touchy subject. In fact, last year he wanted me to do the Cancer Killers lecture, and I talked him out of it. I said it's a sensitive subject, it's emotional. Why don't we start with resolutions to revolutions, which is everybody that makes their resolutions, let's get them, let's get them off on the right foot in the new year. Uh, but I'd like to go back a little bit and talk about what, uh, what spurred on the, uh, the process of, of me starting the lecture on cancer killers. Because cancer killers, the title itself, is not about cancer being a deadly disease. It's about creating in your own body the ability to kill cancer and that's where the that's where the title comes from and that's what we're going to do today is we're going to we're going to teach you all the science behind how do you create a body that can kill cancer on a daily basis and make sure that you're preventing it because thank god that, that the doctor came in and found high blood pressure you know and saved your life that's one way you can save a life that's an emergency end stage disease process but right now, today, my goal is to save your life by making lifestyle changes today. So then you can move on and you can prevent it from ever happening. Because how great would it have been if we could have prevented that high blood pressure from ever happening and those five clogged arteries. And that's where we live. That's where Maximize Living lives. We want to prevent it from ever happening. Not just early detection, but prevent you from ever having a disease. So what happened about a little over four years ago is, um, Another fellow Maximize Living doctor was, um, was, we were at seminar and I was going down the escalator and he was coming up the escalator and I hadn't seen him in probably six to eight months and, and his name is uh, Charles Majors and, and I said, Chuck, uh, lean and mean, Chuck, you're looking lean and mean. And he, and he comes up and we, and we end up meeting at the top of the escalators and he goes, lean and mean, he goes, I've dropped 40 pounds and nobody can tell me why I'm losing the weight. He goes, I work out, and all of a sudden I'll pass out on the floor and start convulsing, and I'm in so much pain, I wake up a half hour later, I don't know where I was. Five days later, I get an email describing that Chuck is in the hospital, and he's got four stage four malignant tumors in the back of his brain that metastasize from his bone marrow. 37% of all his blood cells were cancerous. So, they had no answers. They said, we could do chemo, we could do radiation. It's not gonna cure you. It'll buy you some time. And that's when Maximize Living embarked on the, the mission to learn and teach their doctors how to bring it to the masses to prevent this from happening to anyone else. Because we never wanted to see what happened to Chuck happen to anybody else. And that's why we're on a mission. And as a result of that, you're gonna see a testimonial video that's extremely powerful. Jeremy? Hey, I'm Jordan Hess, and I definitely want to encourage anyone who can to possibly make it to this uh, upcoming Maximize Living Cancer Killing Conference. I'm a father of six uh, boys, um, husband to a precious wife. I've been married for 20 years and uh, found out a few months ago uh, doctors diagnosed colon cancer. And what a surprise, a healthy guy like me hiked in kayak my whole life, uh, been guiding for the last 20 years uh, in Alaska and, and enjoying the fresh air and, and thought I was eating healthy, thought I was just living, on, uh, living the dream. 
But you know what, that really changes your life when you get a diagnosis like this. And the first thing I, I went to, I said, God, there's gotta be a better way. I said, the doctors don't have the answers. Through prayer and through research, I began realizing, wow, my body is an incredible machine designed to heal itself, designed to fight cancer. I didn't even realize I was fighting cancer all these years and I didn't even know it. But then all of a sudden stress creeps in and you know some poor eating habits creep in. And, and with that comes the perfect storm, if you will, of your body reacting and, and not being as strong as it should be. And what I really um, want to encourage everybody with is you want your body strong, you want your body healthy, because your family needs you. My family needs me. So I read the book uh, Cancer Killers, and really this book was very enlightening in the sense of what's happening at a cellular level. I understand biology, that's my degree and my background. And so when, I, when it was explained to me what, what is actually happening, it's something you don't get in the doctor's office, folks. The doctors can only do so much. They're just treating cancer. They're not curing it. Your body is gonna ultimately cure itself with the treatments that you provide to it. So what that's reducing stress, that's maximizing oxygen to your body, that's taking supplements that are that are designed specifically for different types of cancers. You just want to maximize and give your body every single thing it needs to fight off these enemy intruders. And that's really what this is, an enemy and intruder. And it's part of what we've accepted as okay in culture. We've accepted, okay, we're gonna eat this way and we're gonna do this. First thing I thought, oh, this is gonna be so expensive. No, it, it, your health is worth every penny that it takes to fill yourself with what it, your body needs. Because we're not getting in the food we eat anymore. So I went in and met with my nutritionist and part of Maximize Living and what happened was there was inflammation associated with the cancer. I didn't even realize that. It's something that doctors don't tell you, but it was substantiated with the uh, nutritionist out of Emory University. And so how do people know this unless you're, you learn it, whether through a book or through a conference like this? My body started responding very favorably. About two months of supplements and anti-inflammatory and other immune boosting supplements, uh, the cancer shrunk by 50 and that was a, a course along with um, good nutrition, um, chiropractic adjustments, um, taking care of my stress levels. There's a lot to this folks, but I tell you what, we can be overcomers. So I'm really happy with, with the response that I'm getting from this. Um, I know my family's relieved. The doctor even said, uh, my great physician at Emory said, this is excellent report, Jordan. He said, keep doing exactly what you're doing. And so that's what I want to encourage you all to come out and hear what's happening at this conference because you're going to get some valuable information, maybe for you, maybe to fight off uh, any cancer that might want to come into you, but most importantly, if people, to share with other people, to get people connected with Maximize Living and the idea of, hey, let's, let's live to the maximum. Pretty powerful stuff. Today is not about fear. Cancer has enough fear in our mindset since when we're a little girl or boy, we are taught to fear cancer that once we get a diagnosis, our life is over. And that's not true. What, what today is about is empowerment and also the God's power that he put in you to heal cancer. See, everybody, every single person in this room uh, was born with a cancer killer inside them. What happens over time is that that system of killing cancer deteriorates, gets overwhelmed, and then it no longer works to its optimal level. So we're going to break it down for you today over the next 45 minutes, and we're gonna make you all cancer killers, and we're gonna start off on the right foot. But first, we wanna give you a little, bit of, a little bit of truth, if that's okay, a little bit about where we are as a culture, and how are we doing in the fight against cancer. Because really, it started, it started uh, the war on cancer started back when Nixon pronounced that we are gonna get rid of cancer within 10 years. If we could put someone on the moon, there's no way that if I put enough money towards this horrible disease that we're not going to be able to kill cancer and you just get rid of it. So there, there's all the smiling faces and it was 43 years ago where he vowed to make it a national crusade to get rid of cancer through our current protocols. So how do you think we've done? Yeah, not too good. In fact, if you look at the studies, the war on cancer begins where that red arrow is and it really hasn't made much of an impact. In fact, if you look at certain studies, we're getting more and more cancer earlier and earlier. Childhood cancers are going up. Different cancers are coming about. Everybody's getting cancer earlier on. Okay, so the war on cancer hasn't worked, so what do we need? Do we want to keep doing the same thing over and over and expect a different result? No, we want to do something radically different, and that's why we're here today. 
So where are we now? This is one in two men and one in three women are projected to get diagnosed with cancer. So there, there's, a, um, there's a kind of belief system that we, we, we like to think that we're not going to get cancer, right? Because it's hard to think that way. We, we think we're not going to get diabetes. We think we're not going to get heart disease. Because it's hard to put your mind in a, set, in, a, in a mindset where you feel like thinking about you developing chronic disease or deadly disease. I'm going to teach you today, though, is that that's exactly how I want you to think. And you're going to understand why in a little bit. Cancer is the leading cause of death in Canada. 2014, there are over 1.65 million projected new cases of cancer in the U.S. Cancer is the second leading cause of death in children right now. That's not okay. Global cancer cases are expected to rise more than 75% by 2030. That's 16 years away. This is from the journal Lancet Oncology, one of the most esteemed journals. So what are they saying? What's the medical system saying right now about cancer? That we have a solution? That it's getting better? No, they're saying that this is just, we've, we've thrown everything at it. And it's just going to get worse. 75% worse. So never get a reverse cancer. This is what the goal is today. You have to know what it is, and you have to know what causes it. Once you know what it is, and you know what causes it, then we can start to get to the cause of how to prevent it, and also how to kill it. See, cancer is not something that, you know, you're hiding around a corner of a building, and you're trying to avoid cancer, and all of a sudden, you walk out, and cancer runs into you like an accident. Cancer is a development of the body's healing process to protect you from abnormal cells. So cancer is a disease in our mindset, but it's actually an amazing God-given ability to heal. And that process is being detected on a test. So without your cancer, without a tumor being encapsulated, you would have more damage to surrounding cells, surrounding organs, and you would live less long. So cancer is extending our lives buying us time as we aren't dealing with the stresses and the creators of disease in our bodies. And there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that. I understand. But the responsibility and the awareness is really where, where we, have to, we, we have to have some breakthroughs today. So it's not genetics. But what have we been told? Every single one of us. Genetics. You know, you go into the doctor's office, he asks you, what does your mother have? What, what, what did your father have? What did your grandparents have? It's not genetics. In fact, genes don't have a nucleus. They don't have a brain. Genes only act based on the response of the certain stressors or the certain nutrients that are supplied to the genes. So Time did a great article on this and they said it's the epigene that matters most. Epa is above the gene, meaning it controls the gene. That's the most important part. And the gene will respond accordingly based on what it's told to do. So we have control over our genes. So what is cancer? Let's break it down. The body of, is made up of trillions of cells. When you were conceived, you were only two cells, right? You are only two cells. Over the course of nine months, you created, uh, you divided, your cells divided, and you were created 70 trillion cells. That is an amazing power that we don't understand to this day fully. But what we do know is that same power that brought you from two cells to 70 trillion cells, that, that amazing supernatural power that made you what you are as a baby, guess what? It's sitting in you right now. That power is in you right now. That same power that went from 2 to 70 trillion is the same power that heals you every day. That if I did a small cut on every one of your legs right now, that where, would, where would it be in two, in two weeks? Would you even know it was there? That's an amazing healing power that we have inside each and every one of us. Every cell has a life cycle and dies at a certain point. It's called apoptosis. Cancer occurs when a group of cells don't die. They say, we don't want 
to be part of the other cellular groups. We, wanna, we, wanna, we just want to eat all our sugar and party all day, and, and we're going to create our own group. And it's going to contaminate the rest of the body, but that's what we're going to do. Sounds like some bad neighbors, right? No. <laughs> uh, so when those cells don't die, when you support those cells in your body through certain choices, and they're not given the opportunity to die, that's what cancer is. Okay? The P53 gene is responsible for destroying cells in your body that have reached their lifespan. When the P53 gene is not activated, cells don't die. These cells can develop into cancer. So there's genes that actually are responsible for killing cancer, and I'm going to show you a video that's extremely powerful on the inner workings of how the body will literally take one cell that is rogue and have another cell that will take care of it for you so you can heal that. The P53 gene is supported by certain basic fundamental nutritional habits. And we're going to go over that too, which I'm really excited about. What causes cancer? It's pretty simple. The cause of cancer is disease when they become toxic, deficient, or have a decrease in function. Right? A decrease in function. So, decrease in function, decrease in function. You know, you'll hear me say that a lot. Decrease in function, decrease in function. When your body's not healing and not functioning properly, right? When it's healing and not functioning, it's not working, it's not able to heal, what does that lead to? It leads to disease, right? And then the disease is dysfunctional, and then disease breaks down your organs, and then disease leads to what? Death, that's the normal protocol, right? Characteristics of a healthy cell compared to a cancer cell start at the dysfunctional level between toxicity, deficiency, or, or function. So, if you have a vitamin D deficiency, what's another name for that? Rickets, ever hear rickets? If you have scurvy, what's that a deficiency of? Vitamin C, we all know this, right? So a deficiency in one vitamin can create an entire disease. In fact, when they were coming over on the ships, they would, they would bring oranges with them, and guess what went away? No more scurvy. It's really that simple. <laughs> that if you have a deficiency of a nutrient, it creates a disease, a very bad disease. Rickets is softening of the bones. We don't want that. Right, so vitamin D, rickets, vitamin C. How far do you think you can take that? Deficiencies in fatty acids, deficiencies in vitamin A, deficiencies in vitamin B. You can just keep going and going and going. And then you start to uncover, peel back the layers of the onion. Then you start to develop an idea of, hey, I gotta make sure I'm sufficient so my healing power that was given to me at conception by God can work in me every day. So we have to break that down and make sure that you can look at your current lifestyle. You can look at what you're doing right now and say, I need, I need help here, I need help here, I need help here, because I'm going to be a cancer killer, okay? Healthy cell uses oxygen for fuel, does not use sugar for fuel as its primary source. Lives in a slightly alkaline environment, acid base. 7.365, your blood will maintain that pH unless you're in stage disease. And then, and then you go into acidosis or alkalosis. But it will maintain it, and it will take nutrients from your tissues to maintain it. They're called alkaline buffers. Calcium, magnesium, potassium, very good alkaline buffers. So the blood being supplied to your organs can be healthy. But what does it sacrifice? If you're not supplying yourself sufficiently with the nutrients, it's gonna sacrifice your bones with the calcium, your muscles with the magnesium. It's gonna cause pain, and it's gonna cause disease. So we've got to make sure we're sufficient so we have healthy cells. Well, if we look at a cancer cell, what does that look like? It uses sugar for fuel, right? So if it uses sugar for fuel, what's the first thing you should do if you want to kill cancer, whether you're diagnosed or not? Okay, good. So it doesn't use oxygen, lives in an acidic environment and doesn't need proper nerve supply. Again, the rogue cells are disconnected from the body. They're doing their own thing and they want to contaminate all the other cells, okay? So cancer is a survival mechanism. This is the sequence of how a cancer cell, a normal cell, goes into a cancer cell. So if you just picture if you have uh, your digestive system and you're eating something that's caustic or it's tra traumatic to your digestive system. And right here in the digestive system is where it takes most of the stress from what you're eating. So you eat, you have a normal cells, normal cells, over time, over time, you go have that Big Mac or French fries, and it doesn't bother you that much, right, in the beginning, especially when you're kids. 
I remember when I was 16 <laughs> and I was about to get my license. You know what was the most exciting thing to me going from 16 to 17 where I could drive? Was that, was that I, could, I could go to McDonald's every day. And you know what? <laughs> 17 years old, I didn't have any money, but guess what I could afford? Because you go there and they have all, this, all these toxic chemicals in the food and you eat it and it's just so delicious, especially for a 16 year old. And you just want it more and more and more and more. And that was my mindset at 16. You know, I was a very sick child too. I had my adenoids, I had my tonsils removed. I was on antibiotics over and over and over again. I missed more play dates and more parties and more sporting events just because of how sick I was. And it all came down to not knowing the principles of health and healing. Whereas my kids, my kids don't miss out on that stuff. You know, they've never been on an antibiotic, my son. Imagine that. I mean, nine years old, never had an antibiotic. My daughter, one time, she had to be on an antibiotic, and that's what they're good for. Antibiotics aren't bad. They've, they've saved countless and countless lives. She had gotten bit by a tick, and her eye was swelling up. So we took her to the doctor. That's an emergency situation, and we gave her that antibiotic. And the swelling went down, thank God, that we have that antibiotic. Most things that you go through don't require an antibiotic, right? Because your body has what? Healing power inside of it. So the first thing that happens is hyperplasia. You won't even feel that. Abnormal multiplication. Callus, colons, polyps. My son's starting to really train for baseball, and he's always like, Dad, I don't know. I, I think I need gloves. Something's wrong with my hand. And I went over, and you feel all the bumps. And I said, oh, that's exactly. It's like, that's, um, that's, that's, that's your own human glove. You know, let's keep working on that. Let those calluses... Let's let those calluses develop. That's really good. Sa same thing with weightlifters. But then if it goes to the next phases, that's when it becomes dangerous. So then you have metaplasia, which is transformation of one type of tissue to another. It changes tissue, like an ulcer, and that's when you start feeling it. And then what do we do when we have an ulcer? Where do we go? That, what does he give us? And what does it do? It's a Band-Aid. It takes away the pain of the, of the ulcer, right? But does it get to the cause? If you keep eating at McDonald's, right? No, not at all. So dysplasia, any disordered growth uh, or maturation of epithelium. That's like when you see uh, abnormal pap smears and you, and, you have, and you have dysplasia. And that's a transition of cells that are under stress. Now, you have the food, and that's more of a physical stress. You, know, you have the callus, and that's more of a physical stress, like with a bat. Okay? But you can have stress that's, that's caused by inflammation on a cellular level. And we're going to talk about inflammation and how that's the, that's the foundation and root of so many chronic diseases. Inflammation just splays out and creates diabetes, Alzheimer's, cancer, heart disease, everything you can imagine. Neoplastic is an abnormal mass of tissue that results from unnatural growth or division from cells. They occur when cells have lost the control of their physiological process to grow. So they've lost control. They're uncontrollable, neoplastic, then the diagnosis happens. Where do you want to start taking care of the stressors in your cells? Here, right? Once you're here, it's been there for a long, long time. So how do you know if you're here? How do you know? You don't, right? And that's why we have to do everything to uncover what causes this in lifestyle so we can turn it around today, okay? There's a new hi hypothesis. Cancer is a natural wound healing related process. If the cause of the wound or if the wound persists, the continuous natural process will lead to a clinical cancer mass. That's a lot of words, but let's break that down a little bit. What is that saying? What is that science and that research saying? What is cancer? It's a healing response. Now, when you have a sprained ankle or a sprained knee or a cut or a surgery, what happens is an acute inflammation, right? It swells up. Then what do we say? We always say put ice on it. They're actually questioning that now, that maybe we should just let the natural order of things, our healing power take over and don't ice it, let it heal. What they're saying here is that cancer is the same thing as an acute inflammatory response. That you get these negative cells that go to that area, if, but they're only negative in the long term, not the short term. Does that make sense? They're only negative in the long term. So if you have chronic, chronic inflammation over time, 
the body will continue to heal, continue to heal, continue to heal, continue to heal until it can't do what anymore? Can't heal. It overwhelms your body. It overwhelms the ability of the body to heal, and then you get diagnosis of a cancer. Okay? What are our treatments when we do get diagnosed? When we have, this, we have this healing process going in in our bodies, going on in our bodies, and we find out that we have cancer, we get diagnosed, these are the treatments that are available in our conventional model right now. And I'm not here to tell you not to do these. Now, I'm not here to tell you that these are all bad. Some of these treatments have saved countless lives. What I'm doing is I'm just getting you guys up to speed on exactly what they are, what's available to you over here, and then opening you up to a whole new world over here, okay? So, chemotherapy, radiation, surgery, drugs, and transplants are current cancer treatments. Is cancer caused by a lack of any of these? So if you don't, if you don't have your chemotherapy vitamin every morning, is that gonna cause cancer? So you guys get what I'm saying with that. History of chemotherapy, mustard gas, is a chemical warfare agent during World War I. The first chemotherapy drug was called mustine. And chemo only kills fast-growing cancer cells. It does not kill slow-growing or stem cells, for that matter. So when you kill the tumor with chemo, the stem cells many times are left, and that's why you get secondary cancers shortly after. So here's, here's the thing, though, is that that's, that's another reason why your hair falls out, because what, it, what are hair cells? Fast-growing cells, and that's why chemotherapy affects the hair cells. And not all cancers are fast-growing cellular processes either. So chemotherapy side effects are vast, because 100% of chemotherapy is poisonous, Every package insert on chemotherapy says that it causes what? Cancer. So if you look at, 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 at the side effects of chemotherapy, a lot of times it'll say cancer as a side effect. Again, it can reduce the tumor load. It can give your body a chance to heal. It's not that you never do these things, but understand how it works. That's the most important thing, so you can make an educated decision. Because once you get that diagnosis, there's very little I'm gonna be able to do to help people. Because once you get that diagnosis, what, what overwhelms you? Fear and stress. How does fear and stress go with healing? Yeah, they don't really, they don't work. Fear and stress, anxiety, they all take away from our power to heal. So surgery, there's growing evidence now that suggests cancer surgery may increase the risk of metastasis, spread to other areas. Like I said, if I cut into your leg, there's an inflammatory response. One of the things that feeds cancer is called angiogenesis, and we're gonna go over that in a slide. We don't want angiogenesis, we don't want new blood supply, we wanna cut off the blood supply to the cancerous tumor, and that's what happens when you cut in, and you have this amazing healing power uh, going on with a tumor, and all the cells are bunched up in that tumor. What do you think happens if you cut into it? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it releases the cells, and that's why many times after surgery, they'll do courses of chemotherapy to get all those rogue cells that are maybe going into your bloodstream now to try to kill them, okay? Increasing cancer cell adhesion, suppresses immune function, promotes angiogenesis and stimulates inflammation. Radiation weakens the immune system, burns tissue surrounding cancer cells, exposes cells to a hostile environment that allows them to adapt to treatment and cause resistance and may cause greater malignancy. Basically, it just ticks them off when you do the radiation and it damages the outside of the, it damages the outside of the, uh, of the tumor and the healthy cells. So those are our main, main approaches to cancer. The, what I'm gonna show you next is, really, I, I want you to just look at this in, in awe and, and how great our creator made us and how amazing you are right now, sitting in this seat, and how, how incredible the processes that you're healing that you don't even know what's going on. The same process that develops disease that you don't know is going on is the same process that can develop healing. Jeremy? This is a killer T cell video. The fluorescent one is a killer T cell. The green cell you see here is a killer is a T cell, cell of the immune system which is attacking the cancerous red and blue cell. You can tell when the killer cell has recognized the cancer cell because the two dots move around and contact the target. The killer cell then spreads out over the cancerous cell.
Passing the video through a filter makes the killer cell look yellow and allows us to really see how it focuses on the cancer cell. These killer T cells are constantly hunting down dangerous cells throughout the body and destroying them. Now, to me, when I see that, I just, I just know that there's no limits to our ability to heal, not only from cancer, but from anything. So when people come into my office, what we do is the first thing that we do is we create hope, right? Because once you've lost hope, it's very challenging to get healing to happen in your body. So this is another, uh, on, cancer, on T, T cells and natural killer cells, this is a, one of the latest drugs that was approved in 2011, I think. Uh, they're pricing it as improved T-cell function at $30, uh, $30, yeah, we wish, $30,000 $30, an injection, and you can look it up on their website, and this translates into $120,000 for a four-injection series. Uh, in clinical trials, 13% of patients taking this, right on their website, had sev severe fatal and autoimmune reactions. So what they do is they deal with the proteins, they inject these immunotherapy items or s solutions or things that they make in a lab into your body and it takes the proteins off natural killer cells or blocks those proteins that, that, would be, that would be telling them to hold back. And it says, all right, ready, everybody, let's go, get it. And the natural killer cells artificially go crazy and they kill the cancer. But the problem is, is that it's very hard to modulate and control, so what do they do? They start beating up on their friends. They don't know what they're doing. It's like roid rage. And they just, they just go crazy. And then they, there's a, you have an uncontrollable autoimmune reaction. And here's the thing about natural killer cells is that we have them in us already. And they have all the capability to kill cancer. But what happens is they, they, they get deficient. And they, 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 there's not enough of them. And they're not as powerful. So we need to support our natural killer cells, support our immune systems on a daily basis. A daily basis. We have to do things to support our immune system. If you've been on antibiotics in the last month or even year, your immune system's not working properly. You know, if you, if you need an outside source to get through a health challenge, then there's something that's deficient in your immune system and that will set you up for a higher chance of cancer later on. Remember, it's one in two. One in two men will get diagnosed with cancer, one in two. So we can take, I can take a, a quarter out of my pocket right now and I can flip it. And basically that's the chance I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get cancer. It's one in three women. And it's not, going, it's not going in the right direction. So it's gonna be pretty much everyone if they, if they live long enough. Natural killer cells though, if you take vitamin C, which is a very, very cheap vitamin, or eat more vitamin C laden foods, it boosts the activation of T cells, natural killer cells, so the immune system can, has extra armor to protect you against a host of diseases, including cancer. The Journal of Immunology, vitamin C. In fact, many of the advanced cancer patients, I went out to uh, Phoenix. I brought my mother to a cancer clinic. She didn't have cancer, but she had years and years and years of poor lifestyle that was affecting her breathing and her ability to heal. And so we went out, I went out with her, I, I went to the clinic for, for a few days, and this cancer clinic was amazing. And we, the reason why we brought her there is because I know she needed the same thing that was gonna heal a cancer patient was gonna help her heal. Because it's the same thing for everyone. There's different protocols and there's different details for everyone to focus more on what your specific challenge is. If you, if you have, don't have a vitamin C deficiency, but you have a vitamin D deficiency, we have to fix that vitamin D deficiency. But overall, we all heal the same way. And the amazing thing is what they did was they took the toxins out of the body and they gave the nutrients that you needed. So she went on a six week juice fast. All she did was drink juice just to get all the toxins out of the cells and just, and just fill those cells up with the most high potent nutrients that you can do. They also do high uh, vitamin dose, vitamin C IV therapy because it's, there's a huge detoxification process and obviously natural killer and T, T cells. Okay? And if you have an, uh, uh, an advanced cancer and you come into my office, I'll refer you to one of these offices. But if we have, uh, I have patients that have beginning stage cancers and they go through the five essentials and then they test with an oncologist. So I'm not telling you, don't go to your oncologist. I'm not telling you, come to me, don't worry, don't go to your doctor. Every cancer patient that comes in my office, I say, you, you need an oncologist, okay? 
they're in the system. But you also need to be educated so you can make those decisions on how you want to heal through this. Because even if you do conventional, even if you go with chemotherapy, radiation, surgery, you're going to need to be the strongest, healthiest that you can be in order to survive that. Make sense? Good. Three steps to preventing or reversing cancer. Stop making it. Stop making it. This is one thing that's not addressed at all. It's all about killing it, killing it, killing it, removing it, removing it. We have to stop making it. What caused you to start making it? We have to address that, and then you can stop making it. Okay? Specifically and safely kill the cancer. You know, chemotherapy, they have insulin potentiated chemotherapy now, where they give you insulin with the chemotherapy. It targets the cancer cells, and the cancer cells open wide, wide open, and, and it's about a tenth or less of the amount of chemotherapy that you need. And some of the natural, more progressive doctors, the medical doctors around the country are using this. So it can be very powerful if used in small amounts. Safely kill the cancer. We don't want to just you know, kill all the other cells along with it. Rebuild and strengthen the immune system, and that's where my expertise lies in maximize living. And we study and study and study how do you build your immune system to help you not only be healthy, but also kill cancer. So, at the microscopic level, we all have some form of cancer. It says cancer without disease. It's undiagnosed cancer. A recent study of women in their 40s revealed 40% of them had microscopic breast cancer. 40%. 40%. So why doesn't everybody have cancer? Our body is killing it until it loses the ability to kill it. And this is what I was talking to earlier, you guys. I, w I want you to start thinking a little differently when it, when it comes to when you wake up in the morning and, and how you think about your health. Because what we do is we do a very minimal check of ourselves to see if we're healthy or we're sick, right? We go, you know, <clears throat> my sinuses are clear, good. I don't have a fever, that's good. You know, everything feels good in my stomach. I have good energy, good sleep, I'm healthy. Right? So that tells us that everything is okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go get that donut. <laughs> pancakes. All right, I'll just, I'll, just have, I'll just have a little less syrup on my pancakes. Uh, at lunchtime, you know, we'll, we'll have a three martini lunch, right? Because everything was okay this morning, right? When I, when, I, when I get home, I got a sleeve of Oreos waiting for me because who could eat one Oreo, really? The sleeve is where I stop, right? <laughs> and then we wake up the next morning and we do the same check and then we continue doing what we're doing. If you understand how the body works on a daily basis, on a minute to minute, second to second basis, on how it kills cancer, the better way to wake up in the morning is to tell yourself, I have cancer. Because what do cancer patients do when they wake up? if they're in, in plugged into these uh, more alternative, or not really alternative, but these more holistic approaches, what do they do? Do they go have that donut? No. Do they go have that syrup on that pancake? Are they having three martinis for lunch? And, it, and, and what it does is it, is it actually makes you think of, all right, am I gonna feed my cancer cells that I have that have been proven by science to be in my body, or am I gonna try to kill them? I can't, well, if I have cancer cells, I better get my vitamin D. I better, I better get alkaline. I, be, I better exercise. I better do the things that I need to do to kill cancer or else what? It's going to happen. And that's a, that's a, you guys, some of you are thinking right now, that's crazy. That's stressful. That stresses me out. No, no. What stresses out people the most, as I see it, is putting your head in the sand and then finding out later that there were so many things you could have done before anything went wrong. That's the most stressful, regretful place to be in life, is that I should have, could have, would have, I knew this, I, why didn't I act on this? Regret is something that you never want to live with. So get up every morning and say, I have heart disease, I have, I have heart disease developing, I have, I have these diseases in my body, and then you'll make different decisions. Or if you want a nicer way to say it, just say, I am going to do everything I can to kill these processes that are inherently in our culture, in our society, and the stress that I have, building in my body, but I'm going to counterbalance or counter-effect those. So, undetectable cancer, this is what happens. Every 90 days, they double. So you have two cells, one year, two years, three years. You can see how the cells just continue to multiply. So eight years, you have over four billion cancer cells. You know, and the problem with that is, is that where do, you, where do you get diagnosed? 
Where does a, where does a test or, or you feel a lump or, or, or mammogram find it? Maybe here, eight years, right? Cancer cells only detectable at 40 doublings, approximately 10 years. Cancer is considered lethal at 10 years. So what's happening all along this process is we're getting up and we're telling ourselves that everything's okay. So you could have cancer for eight years and not know it. So how do you kill it? All right, we have to starve it. We have to eliminate all sugars. But you're saying, well, I don't eat sugar, right? <laughs> well, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to talk about uh, an event we have coming up where we're going to really break down what really truly is sugar. Because sugar is only what is metabolized in the body that creates an insulin response right, and creates an inflammatory response. It's not the table sugar. It's not the candy, right, always. It's, it's kind of the, uh, the, sheep, the sheep in wolf's clothing, sugar can be, right? It can be hidden in, in different sources. So you have to eliminate all things that act as sugar in your body, okay? Cut off cancer's blood supply, anti-angiogenesis. We're going to show you some foods that do that. Uh, fix the environment, acidic to alkaline. Most water that you're drinking every day is acidic. Test it. And if it's not, it's usually dead, uh, chlorinated, and there's toxicity in the tap water because they have to, they have to kill all the bugs that are in it. There's up, upwards of 100 pharmaceuticals that can be in your water supply. We have to get clean, pure, alkaline water into our body every day. Induce apoptosis through epigenetic manipulation. Everything I'm talking about is influencing your genes. And we're going to go through that in a couple slides. Balance hormones in the body eliminate estrogen dominance. Est there's a lot of estrogen dominant cancers that if you're getting your growth hormone, Elevated, and you're lowering your cortisol through the max T3 that we're going to be doing. Get ready. You can start loosening it up now, Pastor Don. Okay, we're going to do a little exercise program in a couple minutes. Get loose. So, <laughs> correct nutritional deficiencies. Okay, employ cytotoxic botanical compounds to kill cancer cells. Vitamin C is a cytotoxic compound. You understand what I'm saying? It promotes natural killer cells. Remedy inflammation. How many people have had a, a CRP test? homocysteine test on their blood. I mean, it's a very simple blood test that you can get. It shows if you're inflammatory. ESR, you know, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, shows you general inflammation. It's a very simple test that tells us if you're heading down a road towards disease or you're heading down a road towards health, okay? Anti-angiogenic foods, you probably eat a lot of these foods already. So what we want to do is we want to focus on these foods, remove some of the foods that have the opposite effect. And watch out for some of the foods that can be healthy, but you got to watch out for the source. Like if you look over here, tuna is contaminated with mercury. So we don't eat tuna. We supplement fish oils to get our omega-3s in balance. Okay? You can look at uh, certain soybeans or genetically modified soybeans. And they, and they create estrogen dominance sometimes. So you need a, a natural organic uh, supply. Pineapple is very, very high in sugar, so you don't want to overwhelm your body. And these are, these are principles and tools of advanced nutrition that we teach and, and that uh, we could get into more so. Lemons are considered acidic, but actually when the body ingests lemons and uh, no sugar lemonade, it, it creates alkalinity in the body, which is amazing, okay? Rebuild your immune system through nutrition, liver, bowel, and fix your nervous system. So what controls your immune system? What controls your immune system? All the cells, all the responses, you know, when you, when, you, when, you, when you don't have tonsils, now that, now that like mine are removed, I have secondary immune systems that are, have to pick up invading organisms and produce an immune response, because now they're saying when they go through your throat, the tonsils are like receptors that tell this system that you have an invader and we have to activate some of our cells. So what system controls your, your immune system, which controls cancer in your body? Nervous system, all right? The brain, spinal cord, exiting nerves control every cell, tissue, and organ in your body. So for my arm to move like this, it's my brain telling my arm to move like this. For my heart to beat right now, how many people know exactly how many beats their heart just did in the last minute? Anybody? No, do you have to consciously say beat, beat now, beat now, heart, beat now, heart, beat now, no, 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 stop, no, now beat, beat again, beat again, beat again, beat again. No, it does it automatically. How does it do it? The impulse from the brain tells the heart to beat at a certain rate. Five essentials in cancer. Maximize mind. So you can be toxic in your thoughts, and that can create disease. 
Nerve supply, you can have a deficiency of nerve supply. If you have 80% nerve supply to your heart, can you have 100% heart function? Think of Christopher Reeves, C2 he damaged, right? What couldn't he do after his accident? Couldn't walk, everybody says he couldn't walk, couldn't walk, couldn't walk. Immediately he needed machines for his heart and lungs though because his heart and lungs weren't working. Was there anything physically wrong with the cells of his heart and lungs? Nothing, it was just the transmission of his brain to his heart and lungs. Maximize nutrients, you can have toxicity and deficiency here. So if you're not eating an abundance of green, healthy, plant-based foods, you can be deficient in certain nutrients. But if you eat a lot of green, healthy, plant-based foods, but you're spraying Roundup on them every day, so you can, actually, you can actually be deficient and toxic in your nutrients. So that's a double-edged sword there. So you have maximized oxygen and lean muscle, you can be deficient. I would say 90, 85 to 90% of our entire culture are deficient in oxygen and lean muscle that they are, that's required for long-term health into your 80s and 90s. And there's, there's a twofold, like, like Pastor Joe said, I own a fitness center, and the last thing I want my members of the fitness center doing is spending an hour on the treadmill. Well, that sounds crazy. Or spending an hour on the elliptical. That type of training, it's been shown, that creates a deficiency in oxygen, it creates shrinkage of the lungs and the heart, and it doesn't maximize your results when you, when you exercise. So I'm gonna teach you how to exercise in a fraction of the time and get, and get two, three, four times the result. Because what's, the, what's one of the number one reasons why we don't exercise? We don't have enough what? Time, well, we're gonna, we're gonna squash that for you today, okay? And then minimize toxicity, toxicity. Because we have toxins everywhere, okay, everywhere. In fact, Jeremy, I, you know, I was saying, Jeremy, I gotta make sure that I bring my glass bottle on stage, because people are gonna be looking at me if I have a plastic bottle, and saying, you're talking about toxicity. Well, I heard that plastic bottles are extremely toxic. And that's why we have pla pla glass jars, and we try to avoid the plastic as much as possible. But you know, your body's amazing, and it has, it has detoxification pathways. We just gotta make sure that they're clean, and that they're, they have the ability to detoxify you as soon as the toxins come in. So, essential number one, mindset. You can activate or shut down your genes. 2003, study of the Institute of Heart Math, test subjects trained to generate focused feelings were able to intentionally cause a change in the shape of their DNA. Okay, so what, what did we say in the beginning? What was that time article? That cancer is not what? Genetic, right? It's not your genes. What it is, is what's above the gene, and we're saying that the mind, is this, this research is saying that the mind influences your DNA, which is your genes. Negative emotions cause the two strands to wind more tightly. Positive emotions cause the DNA strands to unwind. Positive change is exhibited in less than two minutes. So, pretty stressful, you guys, what I'm going over, right? You guys are thinking, what do I have to change? Do I have cancer now, right? So, I apologize for that. I need, you know, we needed to connect on that level. So what I'm asking right now is you're gonna immediately see a shift in your mindset now. Because I'm gonna ask Pastor Joe to, to bring us through, he's gonna come up and he's gonna bring us through a quick prayer. And I, I want everybody to just close your eyes and just, and, just, and just hear what he has to say as he goes through his prayer. And then, and then I'll explain why I'm doing this afterwards. Before I pray, I, a couple of verses come to me real quick. Psalms 139, I will praise thee, O Lord, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. How marvelous are his works that God would make us this way where we can heal on the inside. Second verse that comes to me is in Romans 12, where St. Paul says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, for this is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, a different mindset, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. It's a change of mindset. Amen? Amen. Change of mindset. And number three, what St. Paul said over there to the church of Corinth, in Corinthians, when he says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So 
We're going to pray that God would help us with our mindsets. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We thank you through the process that you call renewing the mind. We can change our thinking more in line with the word of God and what you say about us and even healing and walking in health. We thank you that we can cast down those imaginations, those, those thoughts that are contrary to you and to the word of God and negative. We can cast them down and we can bring every thought that is contrary and negative and causes us to think in a way that's, that's not healthy. We can bring those thoughts into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And so, Father, right now, we ask you to help us in this start of this new year to change our mindset. Someone said our stinking thinking. <laughs> change that to be more in line with the word of God and what you say about health. And what you say is that you wish above all things that we prosper and be in health even as we soul, our soul prospers. Help us to think to eat right, nutritionally, etc. And help us to receive all that we're hearing today. Let it start right now. Let our minds start the renewal process right now in this area. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. amen. Thank you. <laughs> That's, uh, did you guys feel your DNA unraveling and loosening up a little bit? That was awesome, right? So I tightened it up. I put the stress on you, and he just removes it and gets you connected to the higher power, right? So that was amazing. Thank you. That's why I wanted to do it. You guys, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to recoil it and tighten it up again. So I apologize in advance. So here's, here's the thing. Uh, essential three, uh, quality nutrition. There's six essentials to every cell, you guys, and you need these. 22 amino acids, antioxidants, fatty acids, which are your omega-3s, live enzymes, vitamins, minerals, and trace minerals. These are essential so that, so that the cell can take in nutrients, take in oxygen, release oxygen, carbon dioxide, and move throughout your body in an efficient healing way. Okay, so enzymes. Enzymes, and we're going to do a little experiment here. I have uh, Jello Jello pudding, okay, which you will not see me eat, and I recommend that you never eat this stuff either, no matter what Bill Cosby says. So we have uh, we have enzymes, and we have metabolic enzymes, and these are the ones that spark reactions within cells and run our organs and tissues and cells. And you have digestive enzymes, break down foods and provide optimum nutrients. Anybody want to just yell out where all the enzymes are in our food chain, in our food supply? Where do they where do they live? What? What kind of food? Chicken? Beef? Cookies? Vegetables, right? Vegetables raw or cooked? Yeah, because when you cook it, what happens? Yeah, I mean, you all know this stuff, right? <laughs> it's just a matter of making some connections. So I'm going to just stir it up a little bit with a, with a, with a spoon here. And we're going to... Oh, man. Okay, so there's, you see that? Did it upside down? No movement. Very thick, right? very thick. So when you eat this, if you have enough digestive enzymes, let me mix this one up. Uh, yeah. Okay, so they're both the same. You can see that. Uh, if you have enough digestive enzymes, it will liquefy it and, and it will bring the nutrients into your body to nourish you, to fight disease, have a better immune system, and, and be healthy. Okay, but, but if you don't break this food down, what's going to happen? It's not going to get there and you're going to have digestive issues, and, and, you, and you're just not going to you're just not going to be able to heal because at a cellular level you're not able to heal. So what I have is, and this is this is what's um, in our greens drink is uh, is the uh, raw enzymes. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one pudding here and I'm just put the enzymes in here that you would that you would find in any uh, you know any vegetable or or raw food or fruit. Okay. And then I'm going to and then I'm going to mix that up. Okay. Mix that up. Get those enzymes in there. Nice. Nice. And we're going to see a difference very shortly between the two. And this is the same process that goes in your stomach. Okay? And the reason why I mixed it beforehand is because I, I didn't want you to think that the mixing actually created the, 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 what's, going to, what's going to happen with the pudding. So we need to make sure that we're eating raw, organic foods at all possible terms. And, and, and the thing is with organic is people are like, you can always find something to support your position. Sometimes like, oh, organic's not that important. Uh, when, you, when you read the, the, the research on, on the latest in, with pesticides, if, if at all, if at all, you have to at least go on and see what, what, foods, uh, what, what foods hold on to their, 
hold on to their pesticides and what foods what foods don't. So like an avocado, you can get away with conventional. Bananas, you can get away with conventional, even though the organic are really cheap. Uh, strawberries are very high pesticide load, so you have to go organic. So there's ways to do this, and that, that's what we teach at our, at our makeover. So here we have, okay, no digestion, and then, and then, and then this is what happens when raw enzymes, whoa. <laughs> okay, so it's completely liquefied within like 15, 20 seconds. Now, what are you going to digest better? You know, obviously, there's, no, there's nothing coming out of here, and it never will change until you have those enzymes. So if you look at your, a given day, this is what I tell people, because we're, we're going to do uh, weight loss. We're having a weight loss makeover in a couple of days. And what I don't want is what everybody usually does is they just start taking and removing food from their diet in a given day. That's their diet. I'm just going to stop eating that, or I'll stop eating altogether. Or they, or they remove something that they really love. What we do is we institute an infusion of food. So at every lunch and dinner, you maybe add a salad with some avocado on it, right? You make an infusion of these raw vegetable enzymes, and you can still eat for the first week or so. You can still eat what you're eating now, so there's no deprivation. It's, it's like uh, breastfeeding a baby. You know, you're not going to just stop breastfeeding one day and then start shoveling food in. It's too dramatic. It's too dramatic of a shift. But we have to start getting these enzymes, these natural food enzymes, in our, in, our, in our body. So essential fatty acids. These are the bilayer. There's a phospholipid bilayer on every single cell, and it allows transport in and out of each cell. Can I have a volunteer? Anybody? Come up on stage. Come on up. Come on up. So in order to give you a... You have no idea what you just volunteered for. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so face, face everybody. Come on, step over here for me. So, so here's what happens when, hold that right on your chest there, good. This is what happens when, when, you, when, you, uh, when you start to get suffocation in the cell. And these bad fats, bad fat fats that, that are in every cookie, every cracker, uh, soybean oils, canola oils, you know, vegetable oils, hydrogenated fats, well, as soon as you eat uh, the, maybe the McDonald's French fry or you eat that, that cookie or cracker, you get a little bit of cellular suffocation, right? And then, but, but you don't feel it yet, do you? No, you don't feel it. And then, and then, you, go, and then you go again, you wake up in the morning, you say, I don't have a fever, I'm going to go have that donut. Uh-oh. So here you go. Your cells, they start getting suffocated and, and wrapped around with, uh, with, uh, with these negative fats, all right? Because, um, what's your first name again? Paul. Paul, that's right. Uh, Paul is the cell, just so you, if you didn't get the demonstration here. He's the cell, and then, and then what he's going to do is he's going to have that birthday cake, which I'm not telling anybody not to have birthday cake, but you've got to know what you're doing when you have the birthday cake, and, and then he's going he's to chase it down with some, uh, with some cookies, right? right? With some cookies, because cake isn't enough. We've got to have cookies also. And then, and then there's a token fruit bowl that never seems to go anywhere at the birthday party, so now, now he's going to be, oh, oh, there you go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There you go. Now he's getting really, really suffocated. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, no, I got, can't go over the nose. That, that would be your pass out. So, so here, here we go. Now, now the cell. Okay. So, so now, now he's all wrapped up. Not yet. Okay. So now, so now he's going to, now he's going to, oh, wait a minute. End of the night. I'm thirsty. I got to go, I got to go get, I got to go get some ice cream with some partially hydrogenated vegetable oils in it. Right. And I'm not going to go all the way down, but you can see that now there's no, there's no ability for any nutrients or oxygen to get into the cell, and there's no ability for it to get out. It gets clogged, and then it gets diseased inside, and it mutates. And when it mutates, what does it turn into? Right, but he doesn't feel any pain, does he? This is what inflammation does to your cells. So when you eat that, it's not a matter of if it did or didn't have a negative effect on your cells. It's a matter of how long is your body going to be able to withstand it before it develops disease. So everybody give them great, <laughs> a round of applause. Thank you very much. Go, go ahead down. No, you gotta stay like that the rest of the way. All right, as a demonstration. No, I'm just kidding. You can take that off, absolutely. So uh, hopefully you can visualize when you have bad fats in your diet that that's what clogs the, the cells. But what's the beautiful thing is that when, we when he takes off that saran wrap, that's just like removing the bad fats from your diet and, and entering in these amazing vegetable-based fats that, that, that will just completely heal the cell. Because remember, we have, we have an amazing healing power in every single one of us. So 
The first thing that really anybody needs to do today is start to reduce or eliminate their sugars. Now, I am an eliminator. So me personally, I don't have good success with reduction. Meaning that if I take away 70% of my sugar intake, uh, that 30% that I'm having a sugar, what's it gonna create? It's gonna create my desire for more sugar. So I need to, just like uh, you, would, you would say a cocaine addict, uh, you wouldn't say, uh, oh wait, just reduce to 70% of your cocaine, right? And then you'll be okay. No, as soon as he does that first hit, he's gonna want more of that cocaine, right? So it's the same thing with sugar. Sugar's the most dangerous drug in the world because it's insidious and it's hidden in different things. So you get up with the best of intentions to change your diet and exercise, and then, and then you, have that, you have that whole wheat toast in the morning. Wait a minute. Everybody's like, yeah, yeah, that's good for you, right? <laughs> Turns out that whole wheat toast, if you, ever, if you read Wheat Belly, and, and Dr. Oz actually did a whole uh, demonstration. In, uh, he did a research on it, and he had women eat candy bars or whole wheat toast, and three out of the five women had more insulin spikes and more sugar spikes with the whole wheat toast than they did the candy bar. And then, and then, you're, then you've got to fight yourself and fight yourself to try to eat well for the rest of the day but it turns out you're gonna eat on average, when you start your day with a high sugar meal, you're gonna eat on average 400 more calories. It just happens, it creates more appetite. So we wanna start the, the day with, with fats, healthy fats, because that's gonna help our cells. PET scans use radioactive sugar to identify cancers. Cancer cells eat sugar very rapidly and therefore this test can identify the location. They feed cancer, the tested cells, the self feeds the cancer, okay? So you can see here, this is what a PET scan, the red, the red area is where all the sugar is. They put the radioactive sugar in and all of a sudden it just lights up and they know you have cancer. The unfortunate thing is, and I've had cancer patients in my office say, yeah, I did rounds of chemotherapy. And the interesting thing is, they used to give me a lollipop afterwards or a can candy or a mint. Immediately feeding the cancer they're trying to kill. Inflammation ignites cancer. So what causes it? Bad fats, toxicity, common allergens like casein and gluten. Remember, our wheat is not the same wheat as our ancestors had. Our ancestors had red wheat that was this high. Now we have wheat that's this high. It's called dwarf wheat, and it has proteins in it that we're not used to. And that's why more and more people are getting diagnosed with uh, celiac disease and gluten intolerance, right? And they, they can't eat wheat. So I make, I make the argument that, that we should all start to eliminate our wheat products and, and, that, and again, that's very insidious, all right? It's in everything. Food sensitivities and psychological stress creates inflammation in the body. Psychological stress creates acidic nature and cellular interstitial fluids in the body. So how do we want to wake up every morning is we want to wake up with, with prayer. We want to read the Bible. We want to get set so we can take on the stresses in our life. Does anybody not have any stress in their life? My wife's here, where's her hand? <laughs> Just kidding. So everybody has stress, we have to prepare ourselves for that stress so we can handle that stress every day. And the best way to prepare is to connect, get connected with the Lord through the Bible. So take care of your gut, and I don't mean your beer belly. <laughs> I mean the inside of your digestive system. What I'm saying is 70 to 80% of your immune system is in your gut. They're called Peyer's patches. And they regulate your immune system. We're 90% of our cells are bacterial. But yet we try to manage it, our bacterial infections, with antibiotics. And it kills the bacteria in the gut and causes permeability. And it causes uh, leaky gut. And those proteins that shouldn't get into our bloodstream get into our bloodstream. And then it creates our immune system to overreact. We create autoimmune issues, joint issues, painful issues and issues where the immune system can't fight cancer because it's worried about these proteins that are coming in. So take care of your gut. 95% of the body serotonin is found in the bowels. If you find yourself sad and depressed and can't get out of it, no matter how much prayer you do or exercise or, or nutritional changes or chiropractic, you have to make sure that you're affecting the, this bacteria and preserving it and protecting the bacteria in your gut with your life. I mean, anything that you put in your gut that destroys that bacteria, you have to be very careful about that you don't do that because you need those positive bacteria because they break down nutrients and they allow absorption, okay? So five ways to increase your bowel movements, okay? If you're not going once a day, then you really have to work towards this. The goal should be two to three times a day. The goal. Two to th 
Now everybody's like, wait a minute, two, three times a week? What do you say? <laughs> it's very important that things don't stay in your body. Now, if you're eating a lot of fruits and vegetables, you're not going to have much choice, okay? It's just going to happen. But if you're eating meat and you're having steak and chicken and pork and bacon, if you put that outside a 98.6 degree day, what's going to happen to that? Yeah, you're, like, you're like an oven. So you're putting that meat in you. You need that meat out of you. So that's why you want to reduce your animal proteins to 10% or less of your nutrition. Because you can get all the amino acids and protein requirements from other sources. But you also don't want food getting putrid inside. I know this is gross. But inside your body so you can't get rid of it so your bowels aren't working properly and your bacteria imbalances out. Does that make sense? Good. So daily exercise, max T3 exercise is proven to move, move your bowels. Okay? Take a good probiotic daily. A good one, a clean source probiotic daily, and adjustments to your lower lumbar spine. Because what controls your intestines? What controls your digestion? Your brain, your spinal cord, and your nerves. If there's any blockage in the nerves of your low back going to your intestines, how are they going to work? Not very good. Okay? So the importance of your colon, it has 100 trillion microorganisms. The gut flora provides protection from infection, regulates metabolism, comprises more than 80% of your immune system. A new study links obesity with antibiotics. So if you're struggling to lose weight, your bacteria flora is probably out of balance. In fact, I just learned this about five years ago. You know, you know they give cattle antibiotics, right? And you would think because they're living so close together in these CAFOs that it's because of infection. But you know why they give them the antibiotics? Because it makes them bigger. They gain weight. And this is, this is a little bit interesting because we forget we're, 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 we're animals. <laughs> we're not animals in the sense of animals, but we're, we, we go with the, the laws of nature just like, just like a cow would get heavy with antibiotics. A lot of the same principles cellularly happen in our bodies with antibiotics. So you have to be very, very careful when you take that, make sure it's an infection that you absolutely need those, and then you can start to repair the gut, the leaky gut. Remember, the cells can repair unless there's the stress that caused it in the first place coming again and again and again, okay? So, vitamin D, disease uh, prevention. So, right for the last, I don't know, however long they've been testing, it was always 20 was the number on a lab test that prevented rickets, okay? 20 prevented rickets. If you were 21, what were you? Normal, okay? What the research says over here is to protect from all these diseases, breast cancer, ovarian, colon, non-Hodgkin's, type 1 diabetes, fractures, heart attacks, the vitamin D level has to be 60. And that is so important because more and more research is coming out about vitamin D every day. And most of us, that I've tested, because I've tested over the years, including myself, are between 10 and 28. That's where 90% of the people test. The other 10% over here. Now, where do we get our primary source of vitamin D? The sun, right? But we need 40% of our body exposed for at least 20 minutes a day. How many people are getting that this time of year? How many people get it in the summer? We usually drive and we stay indoors. And work. So what do we need to do? We need to supplement. There's not, there's not a lot of food sources of vitamin D. So what I'd like to do is the research shows that vitamin D actually kills cancer itself. So I'm going to show you a video right now. And it's very powerful that if your vitamin D levels are up high enough, that not only it will reverse many disease processes, but also kill cancer. Jeremy? And now the new study linking vitamin D and cancer in a way we've never heard before. Doctors know that low levels of the vitamin can lead to a host of illnesses, but now research suggests that vitamin D might actually hold the key to fighting cancer. John McKenzie has a story. The studies just keep coming. The evidence mounting. Low levels of vitamin D are now linked to so many illnesses, from breast, colon, and prostate cancers, type 1 diabetes and asthma, to multiple sclerosis and heart disease. I even think of vitamin D as the fountain of youth, if you will, uh, in that it uh, allows us to age well. At least that's the hope. 
And nowhere is the evidence more compelling than here in the laboratory. So all the work here is on vitamin D? Yes. We've got Professor Joellen Welsh has spent the last 25 years studying the powerful effect of vitamin D on cells. These are human breast cancer cells growing in the flask. Taken from a woman who had breast cancer? Yes. Now watch what happens when you add a potent form of vitamin D. Within just four days, half those cancer cells are dead. It looks like the cancer cells have basically shriveled up and died. The longer they're treated with vitamin D, the more of an effect we see. What happens is that vitamin D enters the cells and it triggers this cell death process. It's similar to what we see when we treat cells with tamoxifen. A drug used to treat breast cancer? Yes. That's amazing. It is amazing. It's, it's a very dramatic effect. That was just the beginning. Researchers here then took human breast cancer cells and injected them into mice. Tumors quickly began to grow. But when the mice were treated with vitamin D, the tumors began to shrink. Look, this one was reduced to half its size. The one here disappeared entirely. Similar results have been seen on colon and prostate tumors in mice. The real test, however, remains. Will vitamin D work this way in people? Other lab work is revealing how vitamin D can actually improve the way cells function in the heart and in blood vessels. And the number one killer is vascular disease, and vitamin D uh, makes our uh, arteries more healthy, basically. It allows them to age well. Preliminary tantalizing research on a common nutrient with so much potential. For Good Morning America, John McKenzie, ABC News, Albany, New York. So vitamin D is very powerful, and Robin Roberts, who did part of the report, she's on her second bout of cancer right now. And uh, after the report, which was cut out, she said, oh, yeah, my doctor just told me that I should get my vitamin D levels tested. So she's in her second round of chemotherapy and radiation for her, se for her second cancer that came back more virulent than, than the first one. And she's just, just found out about getting her vitamin D levels tested. We have to start getting to the cause. So dangers of GMOs, these are genetically modified organisms. They splice genes together in different foods to kill bugs that land on it and eat it. And they also do it so it doesn't die when you put pesticides on it. So they manipulate it to make them stronger, but we're eating the products of the GMOs. And this was a study that was done in uh, our own country where they did, it, they did it for 90 days. And then when, when Europe, that's why Europe, even Russia bans GMOs. You guys realize that European countries have banned GMOs. But because GMOs originated in America, the lobbyist powers that be, they allow them to continue to be used in our food supply. And what they did over in Europe is that, is that they did it for 150 days, and this is what they found, the tumors in the rats. So stay away from genetically modified organisms, and the only way you can really do that is to make sure that you're eating organic. It links tumors, kidney, liver damage, and other serious illness to early death in GMOs. Okay, there's plenty of research on it. You can wait until it's absolutely definitive, but this is the way I like to explain it, is that the people that in the 50s that say we didn't know smoking killed us, there was a lot of people that knew in the 50s and 60s and 70s that it was bad for you, and they made the lifestyle change before every last bit of evidence was in, and then like in the, in the 90s, that finally tobacco had a lawsuit. So start making these changes now rather than wait. Oxygen. Oxygen lean muscle, the cause of cancer is no longer a mystery. We know it occurs whenever a cell is denied 60% of its oxygen requirements. This is Otto Warburg, two-time Nobel Prize winner back in the 20s. We've known that cancer is a cause of a lack of oxygen in your cells. So what creates oxygen to the cells? Exercise, the right type of exercise. So we're going to do an interval. Everybody stand up for me. Stand up, everybody, everybody. Even if you have a bad hip, a bad knee, your foot hurts, Something else hurts. What we're going to do is we're going to do 20 seconds of squatting. All right? 20 seconds of squatting. I want everybody to keep your shoulders back. And then we're going to go down. And you're going to, if you're really good, listen, if you do have a bad knee or hip, this, you can do this. Anybody can do this. If you just got up from the chair, you can go back down to the chair, right? We're just going to do it over and over again. All right? When the music starts, when I say start, Jeremy's going to pump up some awesome music and you guys are going to start squatting and then when I say stop I want everybody to rest ready you ready Jeremy start up up raise that volume up come on let's go no don't leave not, not like this like this 10 seconds keep going keep going 
Keep your shoulders back. Come on. Stop. We're not done yet. Stay standing. Now we rest. 15 seconds rest. Let's go, Vern. I know you're tall, but you can get up and down. Let's see it. Ready? Go. Up and down. Pump it up. Pump it up. Five seconds. Double time. I didn't say stop. All right, stop. Everybody sit down. Everybody sit down. Please. Thank you. Thank you for playing along. You guys should be out of breath now. Breathe through your nose. Yeah, out through your mouth. In through your nose. Out through your mouth. Especially heart patients, when you breathe through your nose, it lubricates the air, creates a raise in nit nitric oxide, and relaxes your arteries. In through your nose. What happens when you breathe through your mouth? You actually create carbon dioxide going out at a faster rate, and it'll create problems with your heart like AFib and tachycardia. So make sure, in through your nose, out through your mouth. In through your nose, out through your mouth. Good work. You guys are killing cancer. Oxygen is now going into every single cell of your body. You do this interval training for nine to 10 minutes, three days a week, in a functional manner, then you will start to kill cancer, not only kill cancer, but become functional as you age, more functional. Going on a treadmill or walking all day, or for an hour, is just very dysfunctional and stressful in the joints. So our whole Max T3 program is based on that. So minimize toxicity, guys. We gotta get the toxins out. That's another thing that the exercise does. 287 chemicals inside samples of fetal cord. It's unavoidable. So we have to make sure that our detoxification pathways are working properly. Dr. Charles Major, uh, who I talked about, who's the impetus for all this change at Maximize Living and getting doctors out, We've done, for hundreds of thousands of people, we've done this cancer killers program. This is his, his first MRI. And if you can see here, see how it's nice, looks like cauliflower, you can see it's well defined. You see the spaces. This is a healthy, normal MRI. This is his. It's completely covered with tumors. And it was pushing on the back of his head so hard, that's why he was passing out when he would start to exercise. That's him in a wheelchair. He's about 100 pounds. Stage four, metastasis to his brain from his bone marrow. This was four months ago, August. 100% clean, no sign of cancer in his blood or his brain. That's me with Dr. Chuck at the 2012 London Olympics, and that's him with his book that he authored. And he goes around and he helps people all over the world. Dr. Chuck is cancer free for the last four years. Guess what he did? When he, he just prayed when he got the diagnosis. His family was crying around him and he just prayed and he prayed and he prayed and he prayed and he said, there's a reason why he got this and help me find a cause, help me find the cause, help me find the cause. I'm gonna find the cause. And he just kept that healthy mindset and, and, and he, had that, he had that conviction that he was put on this planet to go through this process so he could teach others. Not one ounce of chemotherapy, not one surgery, no radiation. Stage four brain cancer, completely reversed. Healthier than he ever has been in his life. So I want you guys to know that there's nothing too far that can be reversed if Chuck can come back from what he came back from. Nothing is too hard to reverse from and reclaim your health. So this is how he did it. Maximize mind, maximize nerve supply. He got his spine corrected. Maximize quality nutrition, vitamin C injections. He had, uh, I mean, IV, IV therapy. He completely, he made almost completely vegan, all organic. He took supplements that created sufficiency in his body. He did max T3. He didn't do the heavy weight lifting anymore that he did for years and years, causing too much oxidation. Only max T3 training. He minimizes toxins, coffee enema, cl clearing out his liver. The protocols are very vast, but what he did was all in line with the five essentials. So how many people feel like they have a better chance of killing cancer now after that? 
Yeah, so here's the thing, is that there's amazing information that I've shared with you that I've learned through Maximize Living, but knowledge is power, right? Without action, it's useless, all right? So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna invite you to our event on Tuesday night, it's in my office, and we're gonna do a Maximize Living makeover. It's gonna be from six to eight, and we're gonna go over the five essentials in detail. As a group, we're gonna collectively pick a challenge to start changing where we need to change. There's three different levels, from beginner to intermediate to advanced, that you can, be, you can do your challenge on it, okay? And then once we embark on that 30-day challenge, we're gonna get together again for a recipe night, and we're gonna make sure that the changes are made. Because my, my goal is not to come up here and talk to you guys today. My goal is to make lasting change and be able to support you guys in that process. So what we're doing is a Maximize Living Makeover. The Maximize Metabolics book is the latest cutting edge in nutrition. All right, this was written by Dr. Ben Lerner, and he goes through the protocols on how to kill cancer and to maximize your health and your life. All right, this book is $25, okay, but what we're doing today is for $20, you get the program and the book, and 100% of the money goes back to Abundant Life. That's my contribution to the beginning. Uh, Dr., I mean, I knew I said I was gonna say that, right? Pastor Joe does not know that I was going to donate back. He did not ask me to donate the proceeds. I'm doing that, okay, just like, just like I didn't ask to come up on stage, he asked me to do this, to share this with you. So for $20, we can really get into the five essentials and help support you on your path in order to kill cancer. Okay, so on, on the outside, there's, a, there's five or six of my friends, family, staff that are all signing up people for this event. We're gonna move everybody through really quick and, and we'll get you signed up. And if it's over, when we look at the registration, make sure we have your email and phone number. If it's over 80 people signed up, because last time we signed up 74 people, if it's over 80, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back here Tuesday night and we're gonna do it here, 6 p.m. Already prearranged with Pastor Joe. I just wanna thank you guys so much. You guys are one of the best groups ever that I've talked to. I'll be here for questions afterwards. And again, please sign up. I'd love to see you again. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. My, my job from the Lord is to get this information over to you, to bring in those that we have brought in so far and others in the future, and that's my job. That's where kind of my job ends as far as, as far as this goes. Of course, we'll pray with you forever, but as far as getting the information like this over to you, I have learned this information um, over the years, over the years. I have been told by, by multiple doctors during my great challenge that I was very, very, very sick. One doctor used three varies. And I was told a lot of stuff and a lot of things. And, um, you know, talking to a guy that didn't go to a doctor for 22 years, I never took a, an aspirin for almost 20 years. And in 2006, December 23rd of 2006, my, my health fell apart and progressively got worse for, for six years. Um, I'm here today because Jesus Christ is Lord and he has healed my body, but I have learned these things and I have, I have acted upon them in my life, okay? So I understand about epigenetics, I understand about vitamin D, I understand about some of these things, Dr. Rossi, and I, you know, I pick, I pick his brain because I, I, I find this information very, very amazing and exciting because I want to share it with others. If we are a whole body, and I do have, a, I guess, another ulterior motive. If we are a whole body, we will do more for Jesus Christ. We will fulfill our destiny. Amen? And we'll be able to help a lot of people. And so your job now, I did my job. Dr. Rossi did his job. Your job now is to take it, pray about it, see where the Lord would have you. Okay? I encourage you to go to that makeover. I think we'll have more than 80 people, so I'm saying it's going to probably be right here. But I encourage you to go to that makeover and just pray. Ask the Lord. If this is right for you, this is a season, I believe it's right for everybody. We all need to be good stewards over our bodies, which are God's temple. 1 Corinthians 6, 20 says we've been bought with a price. The price, the blood of Christ, the death of Christ. Therefore, glorify God in your spirit and in your bodies, which belong to God. Amen? Praise God.